Hello and welcome to another fabulous episode of the AI Show. Mm, happy Monday, everybody. Way to start our week talking about AI. Everyone else is. We might as well. You know what I'm saying? Where is everybody coming to us from? I always like to do a little round of where is everybody coming to us from? Tell us where. Tell us your name or your fake name or the name you wish you had. I don't care. Just so we can say hello. Um, as you know, we like to make this an interactive show. We talk about AI, general topics, as well as we work on projects. Although I feel like we haven't been able to get to our projects as much because by the time we get to them, there's like a half hour left and it's just not enough. Not enough time. Do you know what I'm saying? All right. Let's see where people are coming to us from. I have to like toss it out because what's happening is here, I'll tell you. What's happening is um, it takes about um, 30 seconds uh, to um, say something and then for you to actually hear it. So that's why like, you, this is me stalling so you can tell me where you're coming from. All right, let's see what we're where we're at. Jenny Stu number seven. Hey, buddy. Uh, he always brings it up in the in the in the Twitch, where he's like, "Is anybody here?" Hello, Twitch. I don't know how many people. I I I I restream this too. Like a couple of places. Barbados sounds like a delightful place. I think Rihanna's from Barbados, which makes it a global treasure. Riri, global treasure. Uh, hello from uh, Quebec City, Canada. Bonjour, mon ami. I don't speak Canadian French, though, and I don't understand it either. Uh, so, Janice, number seven, thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, Barbados, let's see. Uh, Leo from El Paso, Texas. El Paso, Texas. That's my used car salesman voice. <clears throat> from Sweden. Hello. So that means it's, what, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's like 5.30 p.m. over there. Did I get it right? Did I get it right? Uh, from Benghazi. Welcome, my friend. Welcome. Technology is really for everyone, everywhere. So what are we doing today, you might be asking. Great question. Let's go to my little chalkboard. Man, did I just, my screen just went out. Hold on, hold on, let me go back to my, I pushed the wrong button, sorry. Okay, now I'm ready. Okay. Number one, number one. And this is pretty cool. It has to do with Project Proyecto Gutenberg. Project Gutenberg. I accidentally zoomed out, zoomed in and audio you're gonna love this stuff hopefully we get it to work we, we had some audio issues but we're gonna make it work because that's who we are we are the make it work people and then number two uh, more Rochambeau uh, now he jeez oh, I can't even spell today okay Rochambeau by the way I'm writing it on my Wacom tablet. Um, I don't even know what happened last time. It was like, oh yeah, we're trying to make it so that you can train it. You can train it. Um, also, a couple of corrections. It's 1836 in Finland, so minus one hour is right, but... 
Uh, that would be 1536. Oh, yeah. Well, Rochambeau last time was the space thing. And you might be thinking, like, space thing, like... Not like that space thing. No, like the actual space bar. We were having issues with that. We'll figure it out. And someone, someone had a good idea on how to fix that. And I don't remember what it was. Because I have the attention span of a squirrel. Look at that, covering up my face like a goober. Boop. All right. I think it's time to bring up our guests. Say hello to Brendan. Hey, Brendan. I'm not Brendan. I'm Mark. <laughs> I got I'm it Brendan. wrong. I got it wrong. I like this. I, there needs to be like a, a shameful. Um, <laughs> I have a shameful. Um, I have a shameful sound effect when I get names wrong. Let's see if I can find it here. No, yeah, not that one. Put it on the side of the wall. Bam. Hold on. <laughs> I have a. I have a sound effect for when I get things wrong. Here, here it is. <laughs> Sound effects game's on point, Seth. Yeah. I know. He, Brennan's saying that in a nice way. Only because it took like 50 minutes to like, <laughs> let me find the button. And I couldn't find it. All right. So today we're going to try to talk about Project Gutenberg. How are you doing, my friends? Excellent. Cool. So this is how it works. Um, we actually... Like we're doing this, it's live, but the reality is like I take this out and I put it like in a buttoned up video for our Microsoft friends who this show is for. And so right now we're just free form it, free flowing. But what's going to happen is I'm going to start to like make it official and then I'm going to be like, hello and welcome to this. Like it's going to sound like actual, like if you ever seen an AI show that's pre-recorded, it looks doesn't look, it's not this goofy basically. Um, Got it. And so a couple of things, um, just make sure you look at the camera when you're ready to share your screen, just be like, Hey, I'm ready to share my screen or be like, Hey, let's go to my screen. So we'll do that. Um, I think that's everything. Let me remove a couple of, let me remove this. Uh, any questions for me? Uh, if I'm in the middle of talking and I need to share my screen, there's going to be a little blip when I, uh, have the restream window open do i need to no nah, i'll edit that out like okay. like i'm i edit stuff out but because our ai show friends are watching this live they'll actually see the raw unedited like uncut hold on uncut <laughs> i don't know the why. scoop yeah the oh the scoop the scoop <laughs> or or like for example they'll 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 be able to like watch it like it's breaking news you know Brendan's screen is currently sharing too many things. More on this later. Um, you, know, but, you got the whole board set up. You got I know, up. I know. It's I had a lot of time during the pandemic to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right, so I have everything up. Um, let me turn this off. I'm going to say something like, "You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show. We talk all about." Oh, not this. Talk all about. Let's see if this works. Let's see if my buttons weren't working last time. Nice. And then this is the this is the this is the uh, bumper. Oh yeah, yeah. So I do this, and then I do this. Yeah, it works. It works. It works. All right. Sure okay. Is. Cool. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is gonna be great. Ready as oh. can be. What's that? Ready as ever. Do you need to get any wiggles out, Brendan? I feel like <laughs> I'll be wiggling during the show. No worries. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Here we go. You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show where we talk all about creating and donating thousands of AI powered audiobooks to Project Gutenberg on the AI show. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Show where we're talking all about creating and donating thousands of AI-powered audiobooks to Project Gutenberg with my friends Mark and Brendan. Hello, my friends. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Tell us who you are and what you do. We'll start with you, Mark. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on the show, Seth. I'm really excited to be here. 
I'm Mark Hamilton. I'm a software engineer here at Microsoft. I run the Synapse ML Distributed Machine Learning Library and also getting a PhD with uh, Bill Freeman. So nice, Brendan. Hey, I'm Brendan. I'm a software engineer on the Synapse ML team, digging into this Project Gutenberg stuff and excited about working on tech philanthropy. Fantastic. All right. So we'll start with you, Mark. For those that don't know what Project Gutenberg is, can you fill us in? Yeah, great question. So Project Gutenberg is a nonprofit that has one of the largest open source collections of ebooks on the entire web. It started back in 1970 when uh, Michael Hart, he got a, a free copy of the Declaration of Independence. And he was so moved by this that he sat down to his really old dusty keyboard and typed it all in and shared it on the original like DARPA web then the 17 nodes that was the internet back in 1970 and that became the first free ebook and he then decided that by the turn of the century he would share 10,000 uh, of the most read works of literature with the entire world and so since then it's grown to over 70,000 ebooks and you can check it out online it's got a nice website you can just scroll through all sorts of different ebooks out there in the world and that, and that's fantastic i've i've used project gutenberg before to train like language models like I, and there was a there was a show we did a couple of, of, of months ago I, or maybe it was a year ago where we made a, a gpt2 model speak like homer not simpsons and so we got the data from from project which was totally allowable to do right am i getting that right mark yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the beautiful thing about Project Gutenberg is it's uh, it, it, all of their books are open license, free to use. You can use them in AI projects. You can use them in really, really anything you like, which is was so delightful about Project Gutenberg. Awesome. So Project Gutenberg, I understand getting the world's knowledge and books freely available to everyone. What does this have to do with it, the with AI? This is the AI show after all. Yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, a lot of people it's it's difficult to read books. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort, and um, so what we're doing is we're taking the entire Project Gutenberg corpus and we're converting it to nice, high-quality audio books so that you can listen on the road, um, you can listen wherever you want, um, and we're donating this back to the community. So um, that's what we'll be showing off today, and under the hood, we'll be using one of the Cognitive Services' new neural text-to-speech to make these audiobooks really sound like a human's reading them instead of a robot or something like this. I feel like, because you, you mentioned the number of books it sounds a, like a lot of books. Can you give us a number of, of how many books you're actually, and I'm, I'm, I suspect you're not actually you and Brendan like spending your evenings reading it to the computer. And then what did they do before now? Because I, I suspect they maybe had something. Yeah, yeah, those are great questions. So um, they have about 70,000 audio books, maybe like 60,000, which you might consider like book books. Um, we'll be uh, translating about 5,000, 6,000, and we'll see if we can scale this out. Really, the difficulties in parsing these bad boys, they're like not the, not the most standard HTML files. And on your topic of what they sounded like before, we can give these a listen here. So, we'll All right, let's see if we can get that. this going here. So this is the Project Gutenberg page for the Heart of Darkness audiobook. Um, and this was made, you know, way back in the day. Uh, and you might recognize this voice as a, a Microsoft classic, but this is chapter one for what they already have for just a few books, maybe like 20, 30 different books. Okay. Oh, I don't think you shared your audio. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, make you sure just you share your audio. No. I know, I know. Make sure you share your audio. So they they have they had done some of this work before is what you're saying, Mark, but the quality just wasn't as good? Yeah, yeah, the quality is very robotic. It's very Microsoft Sam-like. Could so. not shake off the idea. The snake oh. would charm me. You understand it was a continental concern. That great yeah. Voice. It's fairly difficult to listen to. You know, if you, if you really are going to do uh, 10 hours of uh, The Heart of Darkness, it would be a, a little tough on the ears. Like, I love Stephen Hawking's, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if I want him dictating an entire book to me, you know? It feels like feels like a lot. Because, um, uh, like, even when I was listening, I was like, I don't know if I can even comprehend it all the way. It's okay, so, say that again, Mark. Oh, I was saying, it's hard to, to, to hear, especially when you're reading, like, Shakespeare or things with large words. It doesn't make it any easier. All right, so let's go to you, Brendan. How are we solving this uh, problem? 
Right. So it sounds a little challenging up front. Uh, fortunately, we've developed some tools and we use some open source tools online that make it way, way easier. We'll look at the code a little later and you'll see the number of lines of code you need to do this thing are surprisingly small. Uh, specifically, we use Synapse ML with okay. Apache Spark on Azure Synapse Analytics to generate a bunch of audiobooks. So what, for those that maybe haven't heard of what these technologies are, can you give us a little context? Yeah, sure. So Apache Spark is a super powerful tool for processing a lot of large data, um, but it can be a little challenging to use on its own. And that's where Azure Synapse Analytics comes in. So it's kind of like a Swiss army knife for of analytics tools. And one of those little things that sticks out is an integration with Spark, which lets data scientists and anybody tackle these kind of big problems that require a lot of processing, distributed computing, without having to be an expert in distributed computing, an expert in Spark. Um, so if you've used like Pandas and Python, you're going to be right at home right from the beginning. Um, you know, you the same operations you use on tables and data frames, those are all there. And now they're just operating on huge amounts of uh, scale. So for Project Gutenberg, we, you know, we did this on some large number of computers, maybe a dozen computers, but it's about as hard as it would be to just run it on one computer. I see. So basically, we're converting multiple audiobooks all at the same time in a distributed way, while being able to focus it on a single in a single kind of way. Am I getting this right? Exactly. You just kind of worry about the logic that you want to do, and we take care of all the distributed processing. All right. So where do we go from here? Well, now that we know the context, now that we know how it's done, uh, can you show us what you do? Sure. So let's jump into the demo here. I'm going to share my screen. All right. Let's do it. All right. So first thing we do, we need to set up our environment. It's not too long. Uh, first, we grab some keys we use for our services. We've got a key that we use for cognitive services. We've got our storage key. And next, we attach our storage account. So we've got an Azure blob set up that's going to host these audio files once they're created. Um, and now, from here, we're basically ready to start making audiobooks. All right. Can you do me a favor? There's a little thing that says Studio Restream is sharing your screen. Can you hide that? Sure. All right. All right, so looking at this notebook, if I'm understanding this right, what we're basically doing is we're connecting, we're attaching to storage so that we can send some audio files over to the storage, right? Right, so Azure Synapse Analytics is kind of this environment where we're attached to all these resources that we might need to use in a convenient way. And we're just kind of hooking it up to the resources we need. We're hooking it up to the cognitive services, we're hooking it up to the storage accounts. And from there, we don't have to worry about them anymore. I see. And so any output is going to be redirected from each of those machines to whatever you're putting in here. Right. So in this case, we have uh, a storage account that we're going to be uh, reading some text from, and then we're going to be writing audio files to that account. Got it. All right. Let's take a look at step number three then. Sure. So um, before I jump over here, let me just pop into Project Gutenberg to kind of show you what's going on over here. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is building out an audiobook of Alice in Wonderland. Um, so here's an example on Project Gutenberg. As Mark mentioned, they've got you know thousands and thousands of these available for free online. Um, and what they show you on the page is they've got these beautiful HTML pages of all kinds of different formats. But there's lots of text in here we don't need. So we've kind of simplified it down. I've got a data frame in here that's got a bunch of parts of text split up so they can be processed in parallel. And this step is just adding on a file name to each of those rows. So for each chunk of text here, we've got a file where we'll write out um, an audio chunk. And then from there, we're just ready to feed that into Synapse ML. That's all we need. I see. So. And I haven't used Synapse before, so if my ignorance is showing, it's I, I'm sorry. So basically, once you define an execution, a source, and a target, and then what you do with each one of those things, you just say, go. Right. So this is an environment that's super tooled around just like building out a pipeline. And once you've kind of connected all these pieces together and you've written your chunks of logic, you can just, you know, you've got this automated thing that can run on its own super simply, super quickly. 
Got it. So the one thing I didn't see, and I think we're starting to see it now, is where we actually run the cognitive, where we run the, where we run the cognitive service to generate the text. Is that what's happening here? Right. So that's kind of the beauty of Synapse ML. Um, you know, this is all actually, you know, this is the magic of what's going on here. And all of the complexity is kind of hidden behind these few lines of code. So the cognitive service, you know, spinning up that connection, making those requests, worrying about things like errors, worrying about, you know, um, the authentication, all of that's kind of hidden away by Synapse ML. And all you have to do is just configure this client. So um, let me kick this off. And I believe this will be finished before I even have a chance to finish telling you what Synapse ML is. But okay. what we have to do here is just import uh, the Synapse ML text-to-speech client. We do a little bit of configuration here. We set the subscription key that we mentioned earlier, the location. We indicate, and there we go. It's done already in a quarter of a minute. Um, a text column that is just, you know, the text that we want to turn into audio, error column to indicate any errors that might come up from the cognitive service that we can then respond to, and then an output file column, which is the file names of all the audio files we want to produce. And then the fun part here, we get to pick a voice name. Stefan Neural is kind of like a good default that seems pretty pleasing to the ear. Um, and it's one of these interesting neural text-to-speech breakthrough kind of uh, agents that cognitive services text-to-speech has. So all of that together, you have this configuration. And then in, in this one line of code, this transform call, you feed in that data frame. And as you can see in this 15 seconds, it took the entire text of Alice in Wonderland and turned it into an audiobook. Okay, so go back, because I, I think there's there's like a, a little... So the, the thing that you defined above, that had like a little UDF uh, UDF uh, attribute on the code. I think it's the, the frame, the, the this one right here. Very good. So UDF... This this is the actual data frame with all of the data in it. Yeah, so this uh, DF here, which is read from our blob, has just these texts and these part numbers here. I and see. then this UDF, or user-defined function, um, is just creating a file name based on which part it is and assigning that part name to the row with the text. So. It's just telling us, it's a mapping that we give to Synapse ML and Cognitive Services to say, you know, for this chunk of text, when you generate the audio, I want you to write it out to this file. I see. Now, the Parquet file that you that you wrote, that was, was that the thing about, because I, how did you break up the text? Because here, let me, let me show our faces here. Because like the thing that about this stuff that always stinks is getting the format of the text to be, to be correct, right? So where did you do that part? Right. So that's kind of hidden away in this demo here. Uh, oh, okay. It is it is a bit of a chore, but oh. uh, depending on the format of the book, it can be a trivial matter. Some of them are written completely linearly. You just pull the text out. Mm -hmm. We use a nice open source library called Beautiful Soup to do that. Oh, of course. Um, yeah. And then there's a few kind of parsing strategies you can go with to try to pull text out. Some of them have a nice uh, table of contents where you can pull out the chapters. Um, and some of them you have to do a little finessing. Um, in this cool case, so, yeah. So this is something you did beforehand and it, that's, that's what's in the parquet file. Okay. Right. Now I'm understanding it. Now if we can go back to the, the, TT, the TTS thing, basic, and this is what I think is really cool, is you're defining this this pipeline of things to do that then it will take it and just do it all for the whole thing. Right. So this is this is basically defining a pipeline that can take an arbor, arbitrary set of text and feed it in to create an arbitrary set of audio files generated from it. And in theory, what is the what is the limit in the number of things that it can do at once? Like can you how many books can it like let's just say in the limit, like how many books could it be doing at once? Right. So for this specific configuration, the limit you'll run into isn't defined by Spark. It's not defined by Synapse ML. The limit you're going to run into is the cognitive services resource, which is going to uh, rate limit your calls. But um, the nice thing about Synapse ML is you can take this simple configuration and the way we've designed the library and the APIs is that you can kind of start with a simple configuration. And if you have a more complex need come up, for example, you're trying to overcome that rate limiting, you can use a more complex configuration. So 
for example, instead of setting a subscription key, you could set a subscription key column. You could allocate multiple cognitive services resources, and you could give multiple keys that allows you to have a higher throughput. So in theory, if you set it up right, you could convert all 60,000 things at once if you had 60,000 nodes to run it on. Yeah, theoretically, if you had the nodes and you know the financial resources to make those calls, uh, you absolutely could scale this pretty much without limit. That's really cool. All right, what what else what else is in this notebook that you wanted to show us? Right. So from there, we've generated the text. Once again, I'd like to make a little brag. It only took fifteen seconds to generate yes. that whole audio book. Very proud of that. Uh, before I show you the audiobook, another thing I want to geek out on is the actual cognitive services text to speech underlying this. Um, we kind of mentioned it before, but these models we're using are neural text to speech models, um, and they actually are kind of shown to have a sentence level parity with natural human speech. Uh, so this is no. Microsoft Sam. Um, this is one. There's Stefan Neural here. There's a bunch of these voices, and they're coming out with new ones all the time that have exciting new features like emotional inference and these things. So, um, you know, the, the previous audio sample Mark gave isn't a super high bar to reach, uh, but I think we've surpassed that by quite a bit. I love it. I feel like I want to hear it, but I don't know if your audio will work. Do you, do you want right. to hit play and see if it works? If not, we'll I'll get ready to share his screen. We're imagining it's wonderful right now. But let's get, let's get, <laughs> okay. let's get, um, let's yeah, get Mark to share his screen. I'll take it over here. Oh, sorry. So let me yes, let me go to that. your screen and let's see if we can't oh, hold on. But before you do it, before you yes. do it, I want everyone to know that I actually trained my own cognitive services a uh, custom neural voice. So maybe one day. I will read the book to you. No, we would have made this in your voice specifically. I for know. Show. Not, I no. know. We could have done it, but we didn't. All right. Let's let's. So now that I've, we, I wish I don't. The only sound I don't have is a drum roll. Um, but I want to <laughs> play it for us. See what it sounds like. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, by Lewis Carroll, Chapter One, Down the Rabbit Hole. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. Let's yeah, pause so it. That's, that's, that's I, I, a little let's uh, pause. A snippet here. It sounds pretty it's good. It's been messed up occasionally, but uh, on the whole, a lot better than Microsoft Sam. Absolutely bananas to me. Like, uh, like, because the the one before that you had, I mean, it, it was it was okay, it was great, like for the technology. But this is absolutely amazing. Like, we could have just played the whole thing, and it would have I would have been like, oh. Because it it was reading in a very calm, you know, like very intelligible way, which I think is is absolutely, absolutely really really cool. Okay, so uh, just to finish up, anything else that I'm missing? Uh, like, where can people go get these? Because I'm I'm yeah, suspected. I'll, I'll I'll pass it over to Brendan for for getting. All right, Brendan, where can people go get these? Right. So we've got about 5,000 of these published already. We're publishing more. Uh, you can go to aka.ms slash audiobook, and we will uh, redirect you from there to our collection of books. Uh, we're publishing them for free to the commons at the Internet Archive. Uh, we also have a little page, and we're trying to distribute them as, on as many channels as we can to try to make these as useful to um, as many people as possible. Um, we also are publishing code examples of this. If you want to give it a shot yourself and try out Synapse ML, you can also go to aka.ms slash uh, audiobook. And I can show a little sample of the page. Just Let's, do little, Let's do it. Clear. All right. If you can see my screen. You can. Got it. So here's aka.ms slash audiobook. Thanks, Mark, for setting up this beautiful page for us. Um, Oops. Down here, we've got the channels where you can listen to this, starting at the Internet Archive. Uh, and if you want to check out our code samples, just go right down here. Just go to Synapse ML, go to GitHub, maybe drop a few stars our way, and enjoy it. Well, this is really cool. Um, I, it, not just the fact that it's reading it, and it's allowing for... Because last week, we talked about accessibility. This is making certain books that belong to humanity now at this point 
accessible to more people and not just with someone that's hearing impaired. I might be, uh, or sorry, seeing impaired. I might be seeing impaired when I'm driving, for example, because I can't read a book. And so this is a really cool thing. Just for those that are wondering, here is here is the Project Gutenberg Open Audio Book Collection, aka.ms forward slash audiobook. The Spark website, for if you want to learn more about uh, uh, the Synapse ML, sorry, the Synapse ML website, go to aka.ms forward slash Spark. And then for the paper, if you want to look at it, it's on, in the archive uh, uh, website, Large Scale Intelligent Microservices, which is really cool. All right. Any final takeaways from you, Mark? And then we'll go to you, Brendan. Well, I mean, I, I hope that you guys like it. I hope that uh, you find these audiobooks useful. Our goal here is really to democratize access to these, and um, you know, listen. Uh, let us know what you think, and, and feel free to give some comments on it. Um, we, we've set up a forum there; you can talk to us. Awesome, Brendan. Yeah, we're looking for feedback. We hope you enjoy it, and if you have any ideas of how we can improve it, if you have any feedback on the quality of the books or new books we can add or should add, just let us know. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us, my friends. And also, thank you so much for those that are watching. We've been learning all about how to create and donate thousands of AI-powered audiobooks to Project Gutenberg with Mark and Brendan. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully, we'll see you next time. Take care. That was awesome. That went pretty well. Yeah, I a couple hiccups. You know, even even with you not being able to play your audio, I think it, because Brendan, I think what it did is it added an element of suspense. suspense. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. Well, thanks so much for having us, Seth. You know, this is such a great yeah. opportunity. All right. Well, my friends, Mark and Brendan, if you ever have anything else, to, well, hold on. Before we go, um, I'm going to tee up some questions. For if folks have questions. For Mark and Brendan, let's get them in. This is like the after the after official show. Did you notice how like I was more professional? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, it's intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> this is the non-professional part. So uh, yeah, we'll get some questions. So what uh, I want tee up because it takes like thirty seconds. Get your questions in uh, for Mark and Brendan. Uh, I'll start with with mine here. Where did you get this idea to do this? Well, I don't know. We have been we've been building out these integrations with cognitive services a lot, and right? we have all sorts of different cognitive services scaled out to zillion order. And um, we have been doing this actually for NASCAR. We have been taking these NASCAR cars, like 600, 60 of them, as they go around five hundred laps, and taking all of the driver audio feeds and translating them, and and turning them into these live dashboards of, of text and things like this. And so, you know, after that, we were like, what would be something where we can kind of give back, uh, do something really nice for the community, not just for a single organization, but for the broader thing. And, and it kind of seemed like this would be the natural next step is, is using this for massive audiobook creation. That's cool. Brendan, uh, and, and how did you get involved with it? Uh, yeah, Brendan. so... Me and uh, I actually used to work in cognitive services. Me and Mark go back to then. And um, just hearing about this project and this kind of work going on here really got me excited about it. And I just couldn't help but jump and join. Fantastic. Well, I'm not getting any questions because this is just so clear. It's like we made a distributed system that translates books into actual speech. That's not bad. Uh, I don't know how it's really, really good. In fact, someone uh, caught was like, aha. <laughs> I don't know what else you say, right? It's like, like I'm taking that as good feedback. <laughs> I'm taking that one to the bank. We are translating audio. Or I messed that up. <laughs> I didn't do it wrong. Breaking. We have translated text to speech in a nice way. That that was better. That was better. My timing was better. Uh, awesome. Well, my friends, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you. Hopefully you have another project. We can talk about it next time. Okay. Probably. All right. See you later, Mark. And see you later, Brendan. I thought that was delightful. Uh, let, let me see if I can't go to, let me see if I can't find, uh, let me share my screen here. Share my screen. I'm going to share with I don't know if I want to share with system audio, but I'll, I'll try it. Share with system audio. Okay. Okay.
So let's go to aka.ms. Hold on. AKA. AKA. AKA.ms. MS. Audio book. Let's see. What, oh, look at this. This is just beautiful. This is beautiful. All right. Let's see. The, um, okay. The audiobooks here are generated by new neural text and are automated by parsing of ebooks. Of, some audio are strange pronunciations, offensive language, or content not so well. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. If there's an issue, um, let's see. We actually find them. Listen, listen. Okay. Internet archive. Oh, there's a there's a there's a browse collection. Oh, I see. Because some of, some of these things, I because these books are whatever the book says. That's what it's. <gasps> there's one about Seth. That's Seth me. by Francis Hodgson Burnett, copyright 1877. Oh, he came in one evening at sunset with the empty coal train. I did. His young face pale and heavy eyed with weariness. This sounds like me. His corduroy suit dusty and travel stained. Are you, are you hearing this? Because I'm sharing audio. Hopefully you're hearing this. Let me know if you're not hearing this. His woolly possessions tied up in the smallest of handkerchief bundles and slung upon the stick resting on his shoulder. And naturally, his first appearance attracted some attention among the lounges about the shed dignified by the title of. This literally happened to me. All of this. Depot, I say. Naturally. Because arrivals upon the trains to black. Uh, speed, uh, let me show you my cognitive services. Speech. Here's my cognitive services. Speech. Uh, this is mine. Uh, yeah, I'll take the survey. Yeah, of course. Oh, no, I'm not going to take the survey. I don't have time for that. Here is my personalized Seth Juarez voice that um, Mark and Brennan could have used. This is me saying that I'm okay with it. Listen. I, Seth Juarez, am aware that recordings of my voice will be used by Microsoft to create and use a synthetic version of my voice. Yes. Yes, that's me. Here's the training data I gave it. Vo I gave it 550 utterances. Looks like less than 20 have issues. Um, but for example, here's me saying this, I will be majoring in CS. So see that I already sound like a robot. So let's see, let's find one. Uh, let's find another, oh, low, sc low, low score. What did I do wrong? I want to exchange GPB for USD. Hmm, low score words. Uh, so there's the accepted data. looks like there was no rejected data. I trained a model and here's the model. And you can see this is generated from the service that sounds like me. L listen to this. Setting the call forwarding number to 14412340331. Bananas, right? But I don't speak other languages. Well, I speak French, but not really well. So I train a cross-lingual language now to speak in French. So let me go, let me see, here, here this one, this one. L'Asie Pacifique est la zone la plus sujette aux catastrophes naturelles. C'est bon ça, n'est-ce pas? Where's our, where's our Quebec person? C Quebec person, tell us if this sounds good. Here we go. Ce dernier provoque fièvre et diarrhée chez les animaux adultes, mais il peut entraîner des malformations des fœtus. So not only could the Project Gutenberg books be spoken in English, we may be able to speak them in other languages. Now, there's a language I don't speak at all. I don't speak German at all. So let's see what this looks like German-wise. The Kraftige Wirtschaftsentwicklung liefert. No, let's see what it says. The Kraftige Wirtschaftsentwicklung liefert beachtliche Impulse für die Branche. What? And then another language I don't speak at all is Japanese. Let's take a look at this Japanese. How cool is that? Yeah. I haven't used it. I wanted to train it because I, I do demos sometimes. And I want to show. And like I said, I... Uh, I basically read 550 things into a wave file and that's all it took. 
Yes. All right. So let's get to our project here. Um, open recent. Wow. I do not have Rochambeau in my recents. What have I been doing? All right. It's time to get to work, my friends. My thing was supposed to play. Why did it? It's like, I don't know why it's not working. Hold on. Let's get to work. All right, here we go. Let's try to remember what the hee-haw we were doing that it wasn't working. It was the space bar. Um, I think it was the ad event listener, which was getting changed every time. Uh, let's see. Let's. Am I using yarn here? Yes, I am. Uh, and this is CD Web uh, Yarn Dev. I don't have to end at nine thirty. I keep thinking I gotta end at nine thirty. I don't have to do. I don't gotta do nothing. Are they gonna kick me off the internet? Uh, yeah. Um, here is uh, it's a little reminder. The space bar was like weirding it out like it was getting reset uh so let's see here uh, let's let's go to it uh local host local host tres mil tres mil and we wanted to do the train okay why are we why are we playing this voice here or this song all right so here it is uh cam pro and then we were doing capture space. Oh, no, no, no. Here, space, 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 space. Okay. That's what was happening. And it was the ad event listener that was having a problem. So what we need to do, there's the theme. I wonder if we go to definition, if there is a way to add the event here on uh on uh what is it on keyboard and then what i can do is i can um i can pass it down using a ref uh a ref call let's see on uh, uh on key up equals uh, we'll do e goes to console.log, log, oops, console.log of e. Why does it like this? Is it because on key up, on key up is React Keyboard Event Handler HTML element undefined? And this is, why doesn't it, oh, dummy, there you go. Okay, so now that we've done that, let me take this use effect off of this so that it's not. And let's see if, okay. And then we'll control shift I here. We'll change the camera and then we'll push some keys. Yeah, see, it's not working. I wonder, is it is it because I need to do it on the body somehow? Oh, here, here. Because key up is happening on this thing. Okay, I think I know. There's gotta be a way to pass the ref up to the body tag. But let's do what every, every self-respecting uh, programmer does here. Uh, react attach, uh, attach event listener to body. To add a click handler to the body element for react component, we call add event listener on the docu dot body use effect. That's what I did. Didn't work. Oh, look, there's a puppy. That's what we want to see. Sometimes we want to add a click handler to the body element from within a react components. Are we look at how to add a click handler to the line? Okay. Okay. But then this is what I did. But maybe what's happening 
let me go back here. So I undid that, right? We undid that, which is great. Um, let's undo this. Maybe what's happening is the handle key is getting refreshed. No, but see, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Add image. Let's try this. Let's try this. Const handle handle key. Which is this. But instead, I'm going to add the actual code in here. And then what's going to happen is it should complain about changes. Well, no, it's not. So let's try this just for kicks and giggles. And then maybe we'll learn something about React that I didn't know. So let's refresh here. Doop, doop. By the way, I need to fix this. It just keeps trying to get a handle on the wrong thing. So then I press space. And this is the part that's confusing to me because it should add it. It should add it. Uh, like it even does all the adding the thing. If frame, we have a frame, set images. Let's see if this does it. See, it works with this thing. Oh! Oh, snap! Oh! So, I know what's happening. So the reference to this training image collection is not, I think what it does is it freezes. Is it captured by value or by reference? Let's see. Um, use effect capture by value or reference JavaScript. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. I'm looking for some good comprehensive reading material on when JavaScript passes something by value and when by reference and when modifying a past value. My understanding is that this is actually right now. JavaScript is always passed by value, but when a variable refers to an object in arrays, the value is the reference to the object. Changing the value of a variable never changes the underlying primitive of the object. It just points the variable to a new primitive or object. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Right, and so what's what was happening is I think the reference to this was getting stale somehow. So I suspect, I suspect that if I were to do this, oh, wrong one. So this and this. Let's see if this changes it. Where's the syntax error? Where is the, oh, I see it. Oops, oopsie, 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 oopsie. There we go. Let's see if this works here again. So we'll refreshy, refreshy. And then we press the space bar. That was it. I was right, I was right. Uh, so I can take this out. It was it was the use effect was not taking into account any changes made to this reference. Let me control plus here, and that's why it was it was foo barring all over the place is because this reference was either getting stale, and then what it was doing is replacing that stale element in the set images, or that stale reference, uh, which is interesting because oh, as you know, as you know. 
the set state, the sets, the use state and react, what because it's functional, right? The reference changed every time. And so what was happening is the captured use effect reference to the images array was a stale reference. Hmm. That's why. And so now, because, because anytime the reference changes, this happens. Right? And the cleanup. And so now the reference is always good. So now, if I were to do scissors and press the space bar, hold on, let me move up here. And I can take these out now. If I do scissors, it'll add it. Because what happens is the event listener was again reframed. In fact, let me let me see if I can console log out. Let me console dot log out. The uh, looks like I don't need to do this anymore. This is a lot of wordiness. Uh, so now it should. Be good. Let's do the use effect and let's see when it's called. Console dot log and then let's let's uh let's remove it let's remove it let's let's see what it calls the removing removing key event listener okay let's take a look at this and let's kill this let's refresh beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, beep beep over constrain adding key listener Do you see that? It's doing it every time because the reference to the training images is changed. And so it removes the listener and adds it before, before it would have captured the reference of the stale image collection. Hopefully that makes sense. So that was what was happening. Uh, and fixing it by literally just adding this is what makes it, because it just, again, you can see that anytime there is a change, anytime there's a change to an element, it removes and adds the listener again. Do you see that? I don't know, I mean, it's quite clever if you think about it, because, 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 Everything is passed by value except complex uh, complex objects or arrays, and then the value that's passed is the reference. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. we figured it out. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Who would have known? We would have had to go to our old computer science things uh, and that's what did it this is good this is a good uh this is a, a, a great learning here of by val versus by ref all it's all, all always always by val by val but the val is the ref for objects and and arrays and what do you got what do y'all think about this uh it's pretty cool right uh that now we know this <laughs> okay now now the other thing i the other thing i want to do is because uh because capturing this is hard i wanted to basically press the space bar and I wanted to keep capturing, I want to keep capturing the thing until I press the space bar again. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's see how that can be done, uh, if we can figure it out. Uh, how do I do that? Okay, so I'm adding an event listener for key up, handle key. When I handle the key, when I handle the key, 
Now what I want to do is if it's a face far and it's capturing, I want to stop it. Okay, so I'm gonna need a state variable here. Okay. Const is capturing. Fantastic. So we got that. Now what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna set this to is capturing as well. Because again, this is a value. We wanna make sure anytime it changes that it's aware. Well, no, we might not need to. We might not need to in this case. Because the only thing that matters. Oh, wow, that's gonna stink because it's gonna add and remove event listers every time. There's gotta be a better way to do this. Oh. Oh, shoot. I gotta play the walk off music here. There's gotta be a better way to do this here. Uh, timer events react. How to create a count time timer with hooks. I love this stuff, but I just wish they wouldn't have to do all this other stuff. Calculate how much time is left. Calculate time. Where's the hook? Yes, yes. So it looks like there's a set timeout. I feel like we need to do it in here. Because I think use effect. I see. It may need to happen in here. I just don't like that. Like it's going to add th something to the to the array reference, and then it's going to take it off as I add it. All right. I'll have to think about this a little bit more. Um, we're getting there. We're getting there. As always, it's been a pleasure being with you this fine hour, eight thirty in the mornings every week for the AI show. Next time on the AI show. We're going to be talking about next generation computer vision capabilities with Florence with Adina Trufinescu. She's awesome. Um, and if you have suggestions for uh, if you have suggestions for a show that you want to do in the future, I'm happy to listen. We're, we're going to have some other folks on. Uh, I'd love for other folks to talk about AI, how it's impacting their lives, what it's doing for them. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being with us. And hopefully, time permitting, we'll see you next time. Again, this has been another episode of the AI Show. I'm Seth Juarez. Thank you so much for watching. And hopefully, we'll see you next time. Take care.